Welcome to our space where talking about the inspiring things with inspiring people is what inspires us. Waiting for you here are the infinite possibilities that creation, collaboration and connection have to offer. A universe where we see everything through roasting the spectacles that help us to keep our faith in the power of imagination alive and well. And now, let's talk. Life drawing hero, Frank Gambino is a solid rock in the life art scene of London. I have modeled for him in various situations and locations in his studio in Charing Cross, in classes he has attended as an art practitioner, and in classes where he was actually the art tutor. I don't think there is a single model in London that hasn't been drawn by Frank, and this is mainly because he is unstoppable in his desire or yes, desire of mastering the art of la drawing from life. Big in form, bold in style, and I would say accurate in terms of likeness, he's also very well known as a master of charcoal. And I'm very happy to have Frank here at Medralla Rosa today. Before we start the conversation, I would like you to enjoy, for a change, some of his artworks, so you will have already an idea of how spectacular this art is. We thought in this opportunity, starting off with a slightly self-indulgent gesture showing you or showing off some of the drawings Frank have done all over the years of me. And in these drawings, you can easily see how unique and distinct his voice is. So I would like to start uh, asking you about your family, okay. about your child memories, and about what, what do you think, as a child, make the difference to make you an artist? What, what happened? Or what was the seminal situation or, or around you that create the, let's say, the possibility of you to become an artist? Well, I mean, th probably the, the answer to that is that I wasn't really that much good at anything else, really. Um, it, I don't know where I got the art bug from, uh, because there doesn't seem to be much of it in my family. Okay. Um, like, I've got a cousin that sometimes draws from sort of, like, does sort of com comic book type drawings. But for, um, and my brother used to draw a little bit uh, when, when I was younger. Um, but I'm not really, there isn't like a sort of moment where I sort of realised that this was something I wanted to do. Um, it was just something I always did. The thing I always think is that, um, like most kids draw, um, the only difference between me and a lot of other kids that I, uh, that I, or a lot of people that I went to school with was that when they all stopped drawing, I just carried on. Exactly. Um, was Picasso who said that, that all kids uh, drawn and then as adults, we lose that connection, yeah. but I've, the idea would be to keep going and all will be artists. All of us will be artists somehow. I guess, yeah. I mean, it's sort of something that, yeah, like kids do naturally. Um, I, like, like I said, I wasn't particularly great at school. I was a bright kid, but like my reading was never very good. Uh, so I was never particularly good at a, a whole bunch of other subjects that involved reading. Um, but with drawing, I was always sort of fine with it. And I felt comfortable. So to, to answer your question, I don't feel, I don't remember a specific moment. Mm. It was, it's just always been there with me. Uh, at school, it was, it was interesting. At secondary school, it was interesting because um, there was another kid at my school that was called Frank. So there was hardly any Franks at my school. Um, uh, and it, like he was another Italian kid, Frank Castellano. And um, whenever they were talking about Franks, uh, like they were saying Frank, they'd, they'd sort of say, what, you mean Frank or Frank the artist? <laughs> So, That's amazing. 
amazing. So I was always known as I the person it. the person that did drawing. Um, like so, yeah. I don't know. I don't know really. I don't know if I can even answer that question. It's just and, always. And been when there. you look back at those drawings, if you have any of them, yeah. Do you think that the style has changed a lot along the time or do you feel, oh my God, I have always drawn the same way? Uh, I, um, I, I was always interested in people. So, I, and you know, my drawing still is people. Uh, so like at school, like I used to do drawings of my friends. Uh, I used to do drawings of the teachers and stuff. Like I'd do caricatures of people. And, uh, but um yeah, I, the only real connection is that, for me, the, the interest was always people. Um, and though I have done landscape and still life, and obviously at school they get you to do like, you know, like a ram's head and all the, the usual thing. Um, like, you know, I'd always look past the ram's head and start drawing the person that was sat behind it, um, if there was someone there. Um, so for me, that's the only through line. I actually feel that my work... It, it took me a little while to, it, it's just always changed and it's taken me a little while to sort of find out what it is that I 100% am interested in. Mm. But people... Yeah, but it is interesting because most of our realistic artists or figurative artists that work with people, mm. they tend to chase a style that tend to be very figurative, very realistic. And you seem, you don't seem the kind of portrait artist that get commissions, for example, no, to do portraits. Because it's such an expressionist style sure. that it feels more artistic, let's say, somehow. Have you thought about all these? What, um, have you actually get any commission to do a portrait of someone? No, I mean... If I ever get a commission, it's someone that likes what I do. I mean, firstly, I'm going to make you look 10 years older than you are. <laughs> which, which is not... That's true. Which is not really... <laughs> that, that is stimulating. Yeah, yeah. So you <laughs> have to be... A, you have to be okay. I mean, I, I don't... I'm not actually doing ch charcoal anymore. But like, for the longest time, I was using charcoal. So... And I was doing portraiture in charcoal. So... So yeah, I mean, the thing that I always say in regarding that is that uh, it's value for money because it's going to look like you for at least another 10 years. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I did a portrait of my nephew when, when he was... Like, it's like one of these apps to see how you're going to yeah, look yeah. in 10 years. Well, this is what I, when I saw that app, I sort of thought, I've been doing that to people for years. For years, yeah. Um, so, but I'm not, like, for me, like, the art isn't about, mm. like, working as an artist um the art so going back to this idea of me as a kid um like I sort of lost my way after going to art college it's always the way like you go to art college or you go to college and it sort of puts you off the subject that you're studying and that's what sort of going why to, do you think it happened I don't know my foundation was good I enjoyed that but I mean at, at, on my degree we didn't really get much tuition uh I didn't really I sort of lost my way a bit I think also as well, like you start to get this idea that your art is for the thing you're talking about. It's like that you want to make people happy. Well, to actually to work to as a it's a career, like it's a thing that you want to pursue, that you need to sort of get people looking at your work, that you need to sort of do mm. portraits of people. So for, for me, like the I'm not really interested in that. I don't want to. I'm not interested in like it took me a while to realize that. But once I was in college um like suddenly the art had been taken away from me uh it so this thing that I sort of loved doing when I was a kid and just always did the thing that got me into art college suddenly it was like how are you going to apply this thing what are you going to do with it which wasn't ever the question that I was asking so for me I just do the art because I like doing it uh, that makes so much sense with the Frank I know knowing sure, yeah. these sure uh, this inside you have about the school years because I have always been quite surprised with how good you are and how little interested you are in making 
your life or money, let's say, or this a business, your art a business, but also you are so inspiring as a tutor, as an art tutor. I think it's because you are putting in all you never got. I suppose, I mean, for me, the teaching is more important than the art. Like, in a way, I, you know, this is the thing I often say is that, like, a lot of people that teach, uh, teach art, teach art because they didn't quite get the art career that they wanted, so they did art as a way of sort of bringing in some money. Yeah. Right? Uh, I'm the opposite. Like, I sort of, for me, it's really important to teach, uh, like, just drawing some, like adding more art to the world and stuff, like, for myself is not that valuable. So I, for me, like I I sort of do the art so that I know what I'm talking about when I'm teaching. Mm. So the teaching sort of these days is sort of almost comes first. That doesn't mean I, I'm, I, I don't make a real effort to do good work. I'm always trying to do that. I'm always trying to improve what I do. Um, but it's almost so that I, like the moment I do something uh, that, like in my drawing and I learn something, I think, wow, I just learned this thing. The first thing I want to do is I want to rush to a class and I just want to tell people, like, I did this thing and it really worked. You should try it, maybe. Um, so f for me, I think often what happens is that, like, the um, the art starts to sort of, like, people start to think of art as a as a sort of way of becoming famous or becoming known. Or becoming someone. Yeah. Something, a creator. And, and to me, it's sort of, it's that's not really that important. It's just like do the art and enjoy it and t see what it tells you. Like, again, going back to this this sort of me as a child, like I almost view, this is going to sound really daft, but like I view the art a bit as like a friend, like as somebody that, as something that, or someone that I've known all my life, mm -hmm. like that's always been there with me. And there was periods of time where I didn't spend time with this person, but then eventually like, so for me, so it is comforting somehow for you, or because many artists have this relationship with art, with their art, that seems to be very complicated, very difficult, and sometimes more a struggle than anything else. Mm -hmm. For you, is it a comfort zone? It, not, not comfort, but a happy place. Is it comforting? It's not a happy, uh, no, it's not a happy place in a lot. Like often when I'm drawing, it's actually quite an unpleasant experience. Like I'm really struggling, uh, and often I don't really know where the drawing's going. Uh, and sometimes I'm sitting there thinking, why am I doing this to myself? I could be sitting in a park somewhere or doing doing anything. Watching TV. Be watching TV, <laughs> but like I'm sitting here trying to draw. Um, but. Sorry, what was the... Uh... Because you said that it was like a friend somehow, this activity for you. And, and then I wonder if it's like having a com comforting food or something you like to come back to because it makes you feel somehow yeah. safe, somehow ples it's pleasant. I think to me it's uh, sort of like the thing you were saying about struggling. That's, that's the... Um, no, it's sort of like all the, you know, that I... I don't question why I do it. Okay. Like, it. Like I was saying that sometimes it's hard to do and it's difficult, but that's part of the process. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really, I try not to overthink it. Um, like for, for me, it's it's just uh, about doing it, like for whatever reason. Uh, it's just sort of, um, like I suppose ultimately I tend to think of, of it as a sort of, as a, as a form of communication, like just as a way of sort of, like if anyone, so there are people that I work with that like I've known for like 20, 26 years, let's say, who don't know I do art. Um, but if say like every so often this happens, I'll, I'll open the door to them and they'll see one of my pictures and they go, is that yours? And I'm like, yeah, that's my, my work. Uh, suddenly like there's something else that they know about me, something that's, that's, um, that feels like it's from me. And one of the things that I don't really want to do is I don't want to get trapped in this idea of um, like I'm doing art for other people. Mm. Um, like I don't know if I'd really enjoy working as an artist. Um, I know that I like just doing it, if that makes sense. Yes, it totally makes sense, especially because of that experience you were telling about your years of, um, let's say, foundation as an artist in a professional way and then maybe that puts you off some some aspects of it made you feel like you weren't that comfortable with that situation so for you having 
having somehow a life that allows you to be an artist and to be also someone completely anonymous yeah. it's part of the game it's part of the interesting frame you are all your life trying to combine or build as a person yeah i mean i want to know what it's telling me it's the starting point so i just sort of go with whatever so recently i've stopped working in charcoal because yeah like it seemed to be telling me this isn't working anymore. I was looking... And in which way? Why? Because you were so celebrated in that moment when you stopped. I, I feel, I have the feeling that when you stopped working with charcoal, people started calling you a master of charcoal or a charcoal master. I mean, I get that a bit, yeah. And uh, yeah. maybe that's exactly why you felt rebellious about it. No, with me no? there isn't, no, with me there isn't really any rebellion. Uh, with me it's just, so basically it was just a practical thing. I was, I think the, the thing is you always have to have like a bit of an overview of the, of the work. And I'd been, so I'd been working with charcoal for like at least 15 years. I hadn't meant to work that long with it. It was just like, I just, Prior to sort of starting working with charcoal, I, I, I was sort of known for using lots of different materials. So I'd do sculpture, painting and drawing. Uh, and at college I did printmaking and photography and a whole bunch of different things. Um, and it seemed to be part of the, the, the way that I produced art. Um, but then I found myself getting a little bit lost. So I told myself, it was almost like sort of, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to mention the Khmer Rouge, but it was like a bit like year one, like a Stalinist. It was just sort of, uh, it's not any better, but um, it was like sort of, okay, I'm just going to find a material and I'm just going to work with this material and I'm going to see where it takes me and I'm going to try and get as good with this material as I possibly can. And that happened with the charcoal? Yeah, charcoal was the one that felt like I could do sort of... Uh, I, it felt like it had a lot of possibilities. The thing I didn't realize was that like 15 years later, like it was still t teaching me stuff. Like I was still learning stuff from using it. But I must admit, like, I think I started noticing this in around like 2019. I was looking at the work and it was weird. I, I was looking at some of the drawings I'd done before, like say the year before or a couple of years before. And it looked like I knew more about using it in those pictures. Okay. Than it did. So you sort of think you're going to keep getting better and better. But I'd actually got to a point where I was looking at it and I was thinking, actually, that's, yeah, that's not as good as that stuff that before. Uh, and, and it's moment to move on and to yeah, try yeah. different different materials, different mediums. Of course, it makes completely sense. And I also it's very humble from a, an artistic point of view I, I, to realise that maybe I'm on learning now instead of keep yeah, learning. Yeah. I think a, a lack of ego in art some, yeah. does help. Uh, some, oh, it can do. Um, so like for me, it was just a question of right now I need to, if I want to sort of change the work, the, the, first, the simplest way to do it is to change my materials. Okay. So it was just a question of finding some new materials. So actually in actually 2019 and like then through 2020, um, like then I, I was experimenting with different materials. I subsequently found like the chalk pastels and the chalk pastel pencils that I really liked working with. You are doing amazing stuff right now with color. I love it. I okay. love it. Okay. I love it. I at the beginning you were using a different style. I have to say to be honest that I like it less. But oh, now yeah. it's like whoa, I love it. Especially when you use just one color or yeah. two colors or unexpected colors that are really neon or really bright or I love it. It's beautiful and and color is always so seductive. Yeah, yeah. Somehow. Yeah. Right? Well, after fifteen years of predominantly working in black and black white, and it's white, just like yeah. really suddenly so it's almost like, you know, uh I mean I don't know whether my colour sense is particularly good, but and I would agree with you, I think but that's part of the process is that it, if I remember when I first started working in charcoal, the pictures that I was doing, I, I was quite happy with. But then I remember looking back at some of those really early ones when I first started and like it, I didn't know anything. And obviously in those 15 years, I'd learned so much. And those early days of the, in 2020 of using colour, um, yeah, those early pictures, like I was just still finding my way. And this is, I suppose, what I'm sort of saying in a slightly clumsy way is that um, like, I'm using these materials and I'm just waiting to see what they tell me. 
And then once it starts to sort of, it, it sounds very arty, but like once it starts to make sense to me, then I think, oh, right, okay, they're doing that. Well, no, it, it makes sense that you start having a fluid communication with the, with the tool, yeah. with the medium. Yeah. The more you use it, it's like having someone you get to know. You can't exactly. know that person from hello. <laughs> you get to know the person. So uh, it makes sense for me that the same process is required when you work with materials that somehow they feel alive also and they bring art to life. So why well, not? This is why, it that way. Yeah. Well, this is why I was saying it's like a friend, you know, like it's sort of it's teaching you stuff like my starting point with everything that I do tends to, is the materials. So like I don't have any message in my work. Um, mm, I would disagree. Uh, and coming back to, to your interest with people, I think that maybe sounds like there's not a real message, but being interested in people is enough of a message. It is a message. It's a, it's a you are telling the world around you that you are interested in connection and yeah. that you are interested in observing who is next to you yeah. and trying to get it. And even if it's as a portrait, you can make a good portrait just with lines. I always feel that there's a lot of inside of the um, psychologically speaking, mentally speaking, there is a fluid communication between the artist and the subject, always. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, there's no, it's not good. It's never good. No, I think, you. no, that's, that's true. And I think if you want to do decent work, you have to be aware of that. You have to understand that. I think that, um, so for me, the way that I try and do that, so for me, like the, the starting point, like I said, is the materials, but like it's pointless to me if I'm just drawing a person and I'm just concentrating on their surface. You could be doing tables and, yeah, yeah. and still life or whatever, but Would you, you are doing people. Yeah, I'm doing people. It's not sort of, yeah, so they're, they're, like the choices I make say something. Mm. Um, I'm not deliberately trying to say anything specific. I always think if I wanted to say something profound or whatever, I'd, I'd just say it. Uh, I don't feel like doing that in my drawing, but yeah, I want the, the drawing to be a representation of the person that I draw. But I know that when I'm actually drawing people, the thing that I'm very conscious of is the materials and their surface. So the only way I can break through that is to, this is why I tend to think of the way that I work with models as a, as a collaborative process, is to do several drawings of that person, like many drawings of that person, and that way through getting to know the person uh, the person who i'm drawing that that kind of stuff creeps into the drawing without me doing it on purpose like i always uh, again i'm going to sound really arty here i always think that there's there's three elements in art and i think this applies to every form of art uh, and i think that that's like the the head the heart and the gut uh, and uh, my favorite is the gut Okay. So, like, the head is in uh, is in is intellect, the heart is emotion, and the and the, and the gut is instinct. Yeah. And when do you say when you say my favorite, you mean the the favorite the part of these three um, ess essence or Whatever, parts yeah. of everything art comes in threes, but yeah. That the one you prefer to explore, the one you prefer to live through your thing. I try to manifest when you do something. What do you mean when you said my favorite? Yeah, that probably needs a bit more explanation. So I tend to try and start with the gut, which is like I try and start a drawing instinctively. And what tends to happen is that I'll start the drawing. I don't have no idea where it's going. This is why when people sort of ask me about my method and stuff, there, there is no, I don't feel that there is any method. I'm just sort of chucking stuff down and hoping that, that something happens. So then what tends to happen is a little bit later on in the drawing, the, the head creeps in and the head starts to see where it's going and it starts to sort of put things together and starts to tidy everything up. But I'll always try and start from, like, if I can, I'll try and start from an intuitive side. Where the heart creeps uh -huh. in... I was okay, going to say, then, okay. <laughs> and then? <laughs> where that creeps in is if I do several drawings of the person and if I get to know the person as a friend or just somebody that I draw... 
then that will start to creep into the picture without me even trying. That's the bit that I don't do deliberately, if you see what I mean. Yeah. It sort of eventually is in, hopefully I'll get it in the work. I think that sometimes, uh, especially on the early stages of, uh, of, of drawing somebody, my, my drawings can be quite clinical, quite cold looking, but I don't want them to be that or just be that. So that's where sort of getting to know the person means that that bit creeps into the into mm -hmm. the art, if that makes sense. That is, is it, is that the reason why you don't draw the same person too many times? I try and keep it limited, yeah. I sort of, I've been noticing this a little bit with when I've been working with people online, is that I'll keep the session to, to like I'll draw them several times, but I'll only do like a, a, a group of four. I always felt that, that you had a, a, a natural rhythm yeah. to, okay, this subject, I'm going to, get to know you then and when I have done it enough I'm gonna move yeah, yeah. to another subject yeah, yeah. and another subject which is very good for variety for you as well in terms of not getting bored and but maybe it's also related with the need of not creating too much attach or attachment or attachment uh, I to mean, the I, subject not to, no no I do like the attachment and I do sort of but yeah I think that for the way that I tend to think of it is if I've only got four sort of sittings with that person, I want to try and get them. I want to try and get like, it's not even getting them. It's like, a, a, it's something that hopefully we create together. But I, I want to do that in that sort of, if, if say, so I have had situations where I've drawn people over a long period of time and then it just becomes, they just come around, we have a chat, I do a bit of drawing and stuff. It, it doesn't feel as intense. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I do come back to people as well. But, I understand perfectly, but, yes. But yes. I'm trying to get it in, I'm trying to capture that. And it's, my work's sort of law of averages. I do a lot of drawing. And then in amongst those pictures are the ones that I think, yeah, that's the one I, I got them, if that ever happens. Like every so often I think, yeah, I, um, yeah, I got them in that picture. Somehow to have this balance between these three elements, you need to be, the subject needs to be quite fresh. Otherwise... Yeah, it's it's too familiar, and then and then the gods doesn't have to creep in as you were saying so much. Yeah, I suppose I think yeah. I mean, there isn't. I try not to be too sort of strict about, but like there are things that I'll I'll do. Like I only ever work from life. I don't work from photographs for that reason as well because I, you know, if I look at a pile of drawings that I've done, I know that each one of those drawings is time that I spent with a person. It's really important to me when I'm doing art, even when I was doing still lives for a short time, there was always somebody else in the room doing, so I'm, when I do art, there's always somebody else there. Um, but for me, like uh, the, the, the idea of sort of creating a piece of art together uh, is what I'm trying to do. Mm. And I'm trying to sort of capture what the, the dynamic of whoever I'm drawing is. And when did you started working with such a big format? For example, when you do faces, seems very difficult because sometimes you have the person far from you and you still do very yeah. big faces. Is it more difficult to keep the proportions in now that you have to work with students and you see them struggling? Um, for you, maybe supernatural, but for when did you start doing such big drawings? The, the I I had been prior to doing the charcoal work. I had been working on really large scale paintings, partly because I used to go to a class which was called large scale paintings, uh, like an evening class, and then I would do like sort of pictures that were like sometimes eight foot by six foot. Uh, I don't know why I did that. I suppose because I tend to quite like sort of work being expressive, so being able to make big expressive marks. Working big with the charcoal, charcoal makes you work big. It's a difficult material to work small with. Yeah. Um, the um, the big the big ugly heads that I do. No, uh, they're okay, beautiful. They're the, wonderful. But the, the 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 big heads that I do, um, they. Um, I don't know why, but like, I, and, and I think this is something natural with me, like, so that when, when I look at people, I'm sorry, I'm doing it now, I tend to look at everything on the face. Um, and so when I was drawing, especially when I was drawing in charcoal, they were sort of faces, but they were sort of like landscapes. So okay. do you know what I mean? It's sort of, I'm sort of, this is what I was saying about being interested in the surface. Uh, 
so that's why it helps to get to know the model because like I'm drawing every bump and every sort of mark that I see uh, and it can look a little bit cold if I don't sort of make some kind of connection like a friendly yes connection. actually you do work in a way that feels very uh, as if you were doing sc sculpturing a, a face instead of, instead of drawing a face yeah. And the volume is very clear. The, the, even the, you can even feel the weight of, of that face. But I think we have talked about this before. Yeah, yeah. I think you, you started, you wanted to be a sculptor. I think that naturally, I'm a sculptor. I think that when I did, um, when I did sort of, when I worked with clay, I think I'm, my, my probably my preferred material would be clay. When I worked with clay, it felt like, oh, well, this just makes sense to me. Like all the things that I don't like doing about painting and like I never put backgrounds in and stuff like this. You don't have to do that with a, uh, with a sculpture. Um, but I'm also very pragmatic when it comes to what I do. And I live in a small flat and I didn't want to fill it up with sculptures. Like that was just not going to happen. Um, and I mean, like, it's more messy, it's also more. It's just, it was just like, yeah. so it was just like, that's sort of why I went to charcoal. I just sort of thought, this feels a bit like working with clay. In fact, it's a lot like working with clay, but you know, it, it, like I said, I'm very pragmatic. Like, one of the reasons I stopped painting was that it just took too long. Like, I'd have to stretch a canvas, I'd have to prime the canvas, then I'd have to paint, then I'd have to put the paints away. I'm really impatient as an artist. Okay. Uh, and I wanted to get to a point where I understood what I was doing, especially then when I first, sorry, when I was first starting with the charcoal, I just wanted to get there really quickly. Okay. Um, and it was just like, I'm just going to use the quickest material that I can think of. Um, That's also why you are quite quick. You you yeah, work yeah. with a lot of energy, and maybe that's also why the big format uh, suits yeah, you, yeah, yeah. because you can make marks that are very energetic and very. It's quite it's quite um, energetic. Your your yeah. work. I don't there, there's a lot of the dynamism and and lines and yeah. there's a lot of things going on in each one of your drawings that are. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, for me, like, I don't understand the point of doing it if it doesn't feel expressive, but that's a personal thing. Like, if it doesn't feel like I'm sort of, you know, like putting some sort of uh, something expressive or, or the, the liveliness of a drawing, you, you know, I tend to draw on top of, on, of things. You know, I want to try and keep something lively in the drawing. I want to make it feel like it sort of um, it has an energy to it. You know, the artists that I tend to look at that sort of relate to my work tend to be quite expressive. Like I don't, uh, you know, I don't, I, I don't look at sort of Renaissance paintings. I, I look at sort of things from the last century or something modern or whatever. Yeah. So, um, yeah, for me, that's really part of it, sort of enjoying the process. Is it there, thank you for saying that, but because I wanted to ask you, is it there any artist that even if you know that your art and the art of that artist are not correlated. You feel like oh, that stuff is similar to mine stuff, or, or we we come from similar necessities in terms of expression, or I don't know. Like you feel related, even if you say it's a secret, you don't say it to anyone. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I mean there are. Uh, uh... Uh, yeah, there's plenty, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I can't... Which sort of, ones are these? Well, I mean, I, I have mentioned it before about, uh, like, I'm a big fan of Diane Arbus. Uh, yes, the, the yes, the photographer. Um, but because also you love photography. Yeah, yeah. I, I think my approach to art is sort of quite similar. Like, I did photography for a little while, and, uh, and I did photography when I was at school, so I did it from quite an early age. Um, like printing pictures. And in that case, was the same? You were interested in portrait, in people? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. yeah. Um, but so in a way, it works a little bit. I was having a conversation with somebody about this before, that it works a bit like photography in the same way that like a photographer 
uh, makes a contact strip and then sort of, you know, like a series of photos and then chooses the picture that they like the most. I do lots and lots of drawings and then I choose the one. So that... she's one of the artists you feel like you could be related somehow? I mean, I don't know how she'd approach it. Like, <laughs> she, might, she might not be so yeah, keen. That's but like, interesting. But yeah, um, and I'm also sort of, I also... But only because they're not, they don't do the kind of work I do. Like, I mean, I quite like Carl Andre, the guy who did the bricks. Um, and I quite like minimalistic art. Mm. Um, but primarily because I don't do that. Yeah. Like often when I'm when I'm starting a drawing, sometimes I'll have in my head, I'm going to do something minimalistic now. But then? No, yeah, then, like, <laughs> then it just <laughs> turns into a Frankie drawing. Um, so, so, yeah, but but... Like, I quite like the idea of having that idea in my head. And, you know, I don't, like I was saying... Because it's all the time challenging challenging you, the idea of doing something very different, very yeah, yeah. quite opposite uh, as your natural expression. Yeah, I mean, one of the nice things about... So when, when the lockdown happened, it was a bit sort of difficult for me because I don't, like I said, I don't work from photos. So it was just like, sort of, what am I going to do? I'm, I'm going to spend... Like however long this thing lasts, doing self portraits. That's, that's just and gonna... then, and you did some. I did some. <laughs> I, I, did, I did about three, and that was enough. I quite enjoyed it actually. They, but like... they are amazing. I saw them online. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it's easy doing yourself. Like you know that the person. I was going to ask. Actually, I always feel, but of course, I'm not an artist. That is probably one of the most difficult things to do because to have an appro an um, a kind of not a very subjective approach to yourself it's almost impossible you well, I, or maybe because i'm i'm a person that look at herself with some sort of vanity and then i can't detach from the thing that i like good angles and if there's something i don't like i'm never gonna get never gonna need to show it so how do you relate with your own image in that sense? How it is the process? I, I don't oh, know. Yeah, I think it's very difficult. I suppose like it depends what you're, I mean, I, yeah, like, I mean, that's not, there's no vanity really in relation to me. <laughs> like, I mean, I can understand. Um, but so, and yeah, I mean, in a way, like it's almost payback. Um, I've done so many sort of uh, pictures of people looking really grim uh, and, and like 10 years older that like it's almost a way of apologizing by drawing myself and, yeah, and do, saying, doing, saying, doing the same see, thing see, I, I'll do it to me as well exactly um but no it's it's really easy it's easy I mean the most stressful situation that you're in as an art or I'm in as an artist is when you sort of sit down and you'll do a portrait of somebody because uh, do you do it sorry with a with a mirror yeah, or yeah. with photos with mirror? No, never I mean I did do I you know like I did do a drawing early on in the lockdown somebody sent me a photo and I thought I'll give this a go it's my rule I can break it if I want uh and I did a drawing and I was like yeah this isn't really me um I, like I said, like it doesn't, I need a person to be in the room when I'm drawing. Um, I managed to sort of, so what I was going to say was that I quite got into, I, I'm, I'm enjoying working online. Um, partly because with me, it's really important that the model has a lot of control. So you, you know this when I've worked, like yes. when, when we've worked. Yes. It's just like people sort of say to me, like, what poses do you want? And it's like, whatever you want to do. Um, and maybe that's why models tend to open up a lot with you. Maybe they give you, you don't know this, but I, I have the sensation like that. that you always get very good poses from your models. But I think it's mainly because you really leave them be there, them, yeah. and also you are super careful about how they feel, that they feel, if they feel comfortable. So that relax a lot anyone in front of an artist and then you want to contribute yeah. naturally it just comes very natural yeah I mean for me the, the so this is one of the nice things about sometimes working online is that the model actually even can control their environment everything yeah like yeah. the lighting or whatever and that to me is fine the like, angle yeah. everything it's almost like they're doing their thing and I just happen to be the, the person that's trying to capture that that's more important to me. And I suppose it's the same as like, you know, if somebody came round to the flat, like I would try and make them feel at home and comfortable. Yeah. Um, so, and you know, like often for a model, it can be like, you know, in any situation in a class, in a studio, you know, it's a slightly vulnerable situation. So yeah, but my starting point 
is always the person I'm, well, I'm sort of contradicting myself. It's the materials, but like, like I said, if I want the drawing to be any good, I need to make that sort of connection with the person that I'm totally. drawing. Totally. It's just a practical thing to do, honestly, because the more comfortable the other person feels, the longer she's going to stay, the better it's going to deliver any emotion or any anything that she sh or he should bring to the table. Or obviously, the, the better you feel. Yeah, and also the, the thing is that as the, the sort of lack of ego thing that I was saying about uh, earlier on is that sort of, you know, if you want your work to stay interesting, you, you have to sort of learn from the person that you're working with. Uh, and like any number of people bring out totally different. It's it's even more noticeable since I've been doing the color work. Uh, it was there in the charcoal work, but probably not as noticeable. The, the work just keeps changing depending on who I'm working with. And it that's pretty much them. Um, they sort of affect that. Um, and like, I don't really want to be sort of totally in control of that situation. I want um their input really and you know i've worked with models some models like now is sort of i've, I've been working with a model called emily who been who just basically i don't even know what i'm going to be doing that day she just tells me right we're doing this i'm fine with that that's actually what i tend to prefer okay so i like that yeah to, to have the opportunity to bring the gods. Yeah, to I'm just like, situation. sort of, I have no idea. Like, <laughs> yeah. what, I, because right, okay. otherwise, it's to, you have time to plan, you have time to consider. You, and that happened to me a lot with, the, with anything mm. I like to do. I don't like to plan too much things, and sometimes it's seen as a lack of professionality, and it's, it's actually you don't want to kill the life in whatever you are doing and the real the realness the real expression yeah. needs to be also protected with things like not getting not getting too ment mentally involved with the process before it happened like after it happened you can yeah. reflect about it all you want yeah and it's actually very fun yeah, yeah. But before, just leave it and just do it. Just do whatever you need to do. That thing kicks in afterwards. That sort of thinking about it. Oh, right, this is and what I was good. doing. And it's good. It's good. Then fine, you can but... write an essay yeah, if you but... want. But I, <laughs> before, maybe gets into the way of uh, good good things. Yeah, I, I, I want to um, be surprised by what yeah, I do. Yeah, spontaneity I... Or, or some sort of improvisation that also can be very good. And talking about that, there's also the element of mistake. And I have been in many of your classes, but I also saw you teaching online for Love Light Drawing, yeah. a beautiful video that I recommend you to yeah, all nice of you to people, watch. Yeah. And um, you were saying that don't be scared of making marks, just make marks because the wrong marks are the marks that are going to take you to the good ones. So with the observation, this is wrong, then you are going to get to, and that sounds very scientific, actually. It's like a scientific process. It's, it works like that. Mistake, 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 then you, then you do it properly. And um, do you see life in the same way? Because yeah, that totally. Works. I think yeah, no. I mean, that's but that's. I mean, one of the things that <laughs> the drawing has taught me is actually sort of how you know it works both ways. You know, like, um, but yeah, totally. I mean, I try to sort of learn from the mistakes I make, and the mistakes I make sort of it. it you know, you can't go through life without making mistakes. It's just the the trick is to make sure that you learn from them. Uh, the thing that I I often say is that like um, so in a drawing class I'll be trying to teach people and they're worried about getting it wrong. Um, so the thing I tend to say is like, well, you know, probably just today, you probably made a whole bunch of mistakes. You probably made a whole bunch of mistakes just trying to get to the class. Um, so why you'd suddenly sit in front of a drawing board and assume that you weren't going to make any mistakes, especially when the phrase back to the drawing board literally means I got it wrong. Let me try again. So for me, like the drawings, and, and everybody's different, and there isn't a right or a wrong, and there's nothing wrong with sort of measurement and all this kind of stuff. With me, um, it all happens in front of me. It's all happening on the page. Uh, so I, the drawing comes out of me. I have to get it wrong and me correct. And then you it. see, okay, if you do, that makes a lot of sense 
even for me, because if you see a line that is not in the right place, you have yeah. the opportunity to draw another one in the yeah. right in the right place. Yeah, yeah, so. If you don't, if you are paralyzed by fear and you don't make any mark, then time passes and you lose your opportunity to do something, something not not even good, but something. Yeah, I think yeah, you have yeah, like you. Like you were saying, my drawings are accurate. I don't even think they're that accurate. They are. Me. They are. They are. They are. I feel all uh, coming back to that sculptoric sense they have. Sure. Them, they are accurate in a way that is not sev severe. It's not restrictive. It's not. It's not a, a atelier kind of accuracy. No, no. I'm it's more not. an accuracy that comes with. Uh, the, observe, the good observation. And that allows me to ask you, how much do you think a good realistic artist or a good figurative artist needs to know about anatomy in terms to do a good job? I don't know. Good work? I don't know anything about anatomy. I know nothing at all. Uh, I don't know what anything's called or what it does. I'm not really, I'm not drawing the bones or the muscles. Uh, I'm drawing. It would be I'm, horrible. I'm drawing a person. Yeah. Um, I don't. Th I don't know. I don't use it. I don't use measurement, and I don't use. Uh, I, uh, the, I mean, obviously, I'm looking at, uh, at a figure, um, and I'm sort of getting a sense of what the figure's doing, um, and I, like it, knowing it probably wouldn't hurt, but. I don't know anything about anatomy. I tend to find that often what tends to happen, and this is the thing I try and avoid, is that um, uh, that sort of when people are talking about art, uh, because basically art is subjective, people want to sort of make sort of restrictions that sort of say, oh, well, this obviously works because this person has done this and has done that. That makes it a great piece of work. And whereas like what actually makes something a great piece of work is much more intangible than that, much less yeah. sort of, uh, I agree. based in sort of anything specific um, especially a portrait and it's it's, yeah. it's it's a paradox I understand it, it is a paradox yeah. because sometimes when you see a portrait of yourself apart from the fact that it is flattering or not and you like it it mostly have to be with with a with a sensation you get from it that you feel related to yourself that you feel like a mirror and others doesn't have that, but still you can recognize when it's a good work. Yeah. Um, maybe you don't like it, my, but you can see well, it is actually good work. But when you like it, there is something that is very intangible and it's not necessarily um, yeah. easy to describe. And I think that, that tends to freak people out. So they tend to want like sort of, um, sort of solutions that are based in um, sort of like almost like in, in mathematical principles and stuff and it's just like um, the nice thing about it I always sort of say the you know I don't measure because like I said I, I've got no problem with people doing it it's just a personal thing I don't measure because it just gets in the way I'm spending time measuring I just want to draw um, I'm sort of drawing a picture I'm not like I don't know tiling a bathroom or yeah. you know what I mean I just want to draw a, a picture um, and like I mean, I've even been in classes where I've seen people sort of doing all this. And I, I used to do measurements, so I sort of know what you're doing. And I'll look at their drawing, and there's no measurement in the drawing. They're just doing that with their arm uh, because they know that that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. To me, it's sort of um, like one of the things I try and do in the class is I want people to get in touch with, to sort of understand their work and sort of start to sort of trust what it is they do and trust their mark rather than to give them any kind of sort of specific, like you do it this way and it's always going to work. It feels like as a teacher for you, it's very important to teach freedom more than anything else. How to, how to see without, how to see an, a subject without fear and how to make a drawing with freedom. <laughs> is, is that correct? Yeah, most of the time, like I've been teaching for a long time now, so like most, and I tend to see very similar mistakes. I don't know how interesting this is to anyone, but I tend to, I tend to see very similar mistakes. Uh, and they've got nothing to do with any of that kind of measurement stuff. In fact, um, 
Which, what, what do you think it has to be with? It's, it's primarily the main thing that people have, if you're talking about sort of drawing, drawing something that sort of is uh, relatively representational, mm -hmm. um, it's generally what you're dealing with a lot of the time in a class is not so much technique, is, is just the sort of the disconnect be between what you think a figure is doing in your head, like the way that you think it should be doing something and what you're actually seeing. Mm -hmm. Because what you're actually seeing is often really different from what's going on in your in your head as to what you're seeing. And over a period of years, I've sort of noticed similar mistakes, similar sort of misunderstandings that people have. Like, it's always a bit tricky when you start teaching because you, you see somebody doing a nice drawing and you just sort of, you don't want to, you don't want them to end up drawing like you. Um, uh, so you want that sort of creativity to sort of breathe in their work. But if you sort of see like regular things that people sort of get wrong, you think, well, I, OK, I can tackle that because that's sort of I, I now know why they do that. Um, and that's sort of and that's all I do, really. And then hopefully from that, um, they stop making those mistakes and then they just sort of then they can sort of get into what it is that they're doing and finding out about their own work. What do you do specifically to in, to encourage the the style they have and still being able to teach them what you have learned along it's, your years of doing it. I don't want to make it sound too hard. It's not like splitting the atom or anything like that, but it's sort of, uh, you do have to walk a little fine, a bit of a fine line because you, often people don't like what they're doing. Like, so they'll, they'll say to me, I, Teach me I to want to do yeah teach me to draw like this person or teach me to draw like that person and I have to sort of make it clear to them that they're sort of that they may be they may have something in their work that doesn't look like that person and maybe they should encourage and nurture that thing um, but at the same time they want me to sort of make sure that when they're drawing a face or a hands or whatever that they can do it so so I'll show them those things but I'll try not to sort of impose it's more like they can take what they find useful in what I'm saying. But ultimately what I want them to do, and when it's really worked well in the drawing classes is when people have finally sort of thought, oh, right, I do this. Because that's how it worked for me. Like after I left college and I, I didn't like what I was doing or I didn't really know what I was doing, I just went to drawing classes and drew and drew and drew. And then eventually the work started to tell me what I did. This thing about big heads and close-ups and stuff, I didn't know I wanted to do that. It just sort of told me. And then I had the option to either sort of go with it. Or to go somewhere or else. Somewhere else. I decided to go with it. And it was a, and it's been a, a wonderful journey, really, to be honest. I, being a model in so many classes, yeah. I always think about how difficult it is to keep a balance between being politically correct, of, of course, and teaching art. There's no right or wrong, of course. No. But at the same time, to not lose that sense of self-criticism and, and not being so complacent in the process, I feel like these days our tutors, our schools in general are getting too complacent, is the word? How do you say that? Like too benevolent with the students. Oh, right. Like sort of they won't say anything to them. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Just to not break them or or make them feel bad when sometimes the process of uh, learning and growing, well, it, there's a lot of pain in it, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it can it be can. it can be done with love also and with with a good psychology and understanding of the process and, and not let, letting them alone, just just following the whole process as an art tutor. But not saying anything is also not necessarily very good. That's a very personal opinion. Uh, no, I agree. I think that I think there's just a lot of sort of um, you're dealing with an awful lot of stuff. And often I find that drawing is not so much about what you're doing with your hands. It's what's going on in your head. And this is often what you're dealing with when you're uh, when you're talking to students. Um, there's this sort of thing that people say, which is like, but isn't art this or isn't art that? And I just sort of think the moment you're asking that question, you're sort of for me, you're missing the point because sort of as far as I'm concerned, art is sort of is in drawing art is self-expression. So, you know, if you're asking, should it be this or should it be that? It's like, you know, find what it is for you. 
Um, and I don't really have a, so a lot of the time I'm not telling, I'm trying not to tell them exactly how to draw. Like I might point out those mistakes that I was talking about, but I'm trying to get rid of all that sort of, if I can, I'm trying to get rid of all that kind of sort of like art is about sort of suffering or art is about um, sort of being in the Royal Academy or it's like, you know, you can get real pleasure out of what you're doing if you just, and it can take you in some really interesting directions. And if you're working from life, it can get you to meet some really cool people. Um, it's sort of, it, it's what it is and it's happening in front of you. So try to get rid of all those, if you can, all that static around you that's sort of telling you that it should be something else. Uh, that's the thing that's really important to me and to get across in the class, which means that like, I am fine to talk to people and sort of tell them. I, I'll always, I always sort of say that with, with my classes, they're probably not a bad starting point. Maybe don't stay in them all the time, you know, don't keep coming to them year after year. But like, I can probably get people to sort of understand what they're, they're into, like um, art-wise. And then maybe they can move to another class that will take them in another direction or another direction. But I'm probably not a bad starting point, I think, as a teacher. Um, but like, I... So, yeah, for me, it's not about sort of leaving them alone. It's about sort of saying, try yeah. this, try that. My classes can be for, for some... Guiding them, but without being too um, condescending. Yeah, totally not. Yeah, hopefully not anyway. I, 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 that's I mean, what you, I meant. You, you've modelled at my classes, yeah. so hopefully the like... Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's more about sort of hopefully trying to get them to understand what it is that they're doing and what their work is telling them. Uh, and then sort of just to give them the confidence. And I suppose this is why it's useful being somebody that does art and somebody that has a body of work is that it's sort of, and I, this is what I meant earlier on by sort of sometimes it's really useful sort of doing the art. Because, you know, if I sort of say to somebody, uh, well, I often do pictures that don't work and they're, they're like, but your work is always good. And it's like, yeah, but that's because I put, I only show the pictures that I like but I do an awful lot of stuff that I don't like. Exactly. It's quite useful for the for the the person that I'm teaching to know that because if they think that everything you do is it's great, good, yeah. yeah. Do you see what I mean? So it's sort of and plus it also means that if somebody looks at my work and they don't like it and they're in my class, they don't have to listen to me. They've got a frame of reference. If they like my work and they think, "Oh, okay, he seems to sort of know what he's doing." I'll listen to what he's got to say and they can pick the bits that are useful to them. Um, so that's why I, I feel, I mean, there are plenty of art tutors that don't do, you know, it's a bit like being a football manager. You don't have to be the best footballer in the world. Some of them weren't, um, but they're still good managers. You don't necessarily have to be good, but it, it, it gives me a sort of having a body of work and work that people have seen, um, at least gives the person that's in the class a sort of framework and some way of sort of saying, is it worth listening to this person or not? And or not is just as valid if they don't if they don't like what I do. Why are you always asked about how to draw hair? I, you seem to be a specialist on on drawing hair. I, I, and have you find that it's something difficult? It's a feature difficult to get? Right. Or? No, no, it's actually. It's, you have a wonderful style. You do have. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure that there are plenty of people out there that. That, that are good at drawing hair but it's it's um it's sort of um um i suppose it's just because i do take time to draw the hair and i do think that if you sort of do that i mean well that, you have 50 percent of the picture probably yeah i mean i was I, I always say that like it does like you know often depending on the person that i'm drawing like sometimes when i do it with you when i was drawing you you know, if I was doing a portrait, I'd, I'd spend like 50% of the time doing the face and I'd probably spend just as much time doing the hair, sometimes more, uh, depending on how complicated the hair was. But once you've done that, then uh, the person looks much more believable. And I suppose that's the thing I'm saying about regarding, you know, sometimes I will show processes um, because it's not as hard as people think. So often I'll, I'll be in a class and people won't draw hair or, 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 or just draw it as strands or, or won't draw feet and hands. And when you ask them, they say, oh, well, you know, I, I'm not interested in that. But it always looks like they just can't do it. So showing them like some techniques that might help is useful. But like I said, I, when, when I show people how to draw hair, it's always really interesting because they're using my, the, the method that I'm, I'm telling them. But it all looks different. 
and they create it in a different way, yeah. in their own way. Hopefully, <clears throat> like the so and and once they do that, then it's just an important thing. Like I think, sort of like if you're going to do, if, like I've this is the thing I always say as well. Like I've seen lots of really cool drawings where they look really nice, but then the, the people have done the hair really badly, and the drawing looks a bit average. Uh, because of that, yeah, and I've seen the opposite. I've seen a very average-looking drawing, but they've spent time a lot on the of hair, attention and in then the suddenly, hair. <laughs> suddenly it works. It's, it good, it, it's it almost... good. It, it's a mark of reference, let's say. It always works, um, even even considering, for example, what we call a good presented person. Yeah. Everything starts with the hair. I think if you if you if you're trying to get a likeness. <clears throat> And you don't like, and you like basically the hair on each on, on every person is sort of just as much to do with how yeah, they look as as their features. So if you don't take the time to do that, then you're losing like a really major aspect of who that person is. Yeah, that is really important. What is the more stressful part of uh, your work or your your job as an artist? What what part you really don't like it? Uh, I mean, generally with me, what tends to happen is that I'll go through sort of phases where the work doesn't work um, and it's not working. So years ago when I was younger and I was a bit more new to it and uh, like, or you know, when I started taking it seriously and I was sort of um, a bit more new to it, I, I'd go through phases where it just felt like I couldn't draw anymore and I'd forgotten how to do it. And I'd look at all my past stuff and I was like, well, I could do it then. Why am I I'm not doing it? Now I realise that that's something that happens on a regular basis. This is another thing that you can impart to people that sort of a drawing, like they, they, they'll come in and they'll have like weeks where it's just not working. Um, there are times where it, it's just incredibly frustrating. Like I just can't get the thing to work and every drawing I do, it's like I don't know what I'm doing. And then it comes back. Um, so I think that's generally the most stressful. Like I said, like sometimes portraiture can be stressful when you know that the person really wants it to look good. Mm. Would you say then <clears throat> that it's stressful the lack of inspiration? Because feeling feeling in that sort of flowing where everything goes well is what we call being inspired. And mm -hmm. uh, but as human beings we have to deal also with the lack of, of inspiration yeah, yeah, and yeah. keep going Do, are you able to keep going when you don't feel yeah, that things think, are going well yeah i think that's the thing like i think <clears throat> you have to sort of uh, i mean i'm fine to stop for a for a long period of time well these days a long period of time is like two days because <laughs> uh, i'm drawing every day now but like uh, i'm fine to stop and i i found that with teaching actually i found that um it was always really useful for me to take a long break from teaching just so that I still had enthusiasm. Um, but with now I realize that I just have to keep going. I have to keep drawing. And the interesting thing is that now what seems to happen is that I'll, I'll just draw on top of those, those bad drawings I did. And then it becomes a sort of background sort of texture. Um, but no, I think you have to just plow through it. It just happens. Uh, like I'll, and the opposite happens when it's working. I have no idea why it's working. It just is. So I'll, I'll just, I'll just go with it. Uh, so that's generally the hardest bit is just those periods where it, and, and I think a lot of people that do art sort of go through them. Most of artists talk about them. It's, it's like a roller coaster. Like, I guess, um, yeah. you have to deal a lot with feeling very inspired and maybe feeling like it's, you are not doing anything good and then the day after yeah. feeling inspired again and and that's why it's probably good to just keep going <clears throat> the, the more you do it the more you realize it will come back well so far it has um but the more you do it so you just have to get through it um and you know like it's interesting because people don't notice they sort of still think that those so like i said it's weird a lot of it is just sort of internal um but yeah you just have to get through those uh it's just the way it the way it works and i think that's part of the process like i do think that you you know uh, and, then, and then when when suddenly it starts to work it's it's been helped by the fact that you've had that sort of fellow period where it's just not working at all is it there any artwork i think this is a hard question for you but i would like to know that you are particularly proud of of my stuff it's hard to say. It's really. hard to say because you draw so much and you create so much art every so single week that maybe... It's, it's always the last thing I've done. 
Um, that's the thing that I'll look at. I'll so, um, yeah, so that's, a, that's a good answer. <laughs> it, 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 what, what was it? What was it? Uh, it was just a portrait I did of the, the model that I, I mentioned before, Emily, uh, in, uh, in the States. And um, yeah, it was the last one <clears> I did and I, I liked it. Uh, for me, like, I suppose, um, like, there's a couple of things. Like, for, for me, it's just sort of, it's important to move on. It's, it's, it's a lot about doing uh, and about just making art. Um, so it's not that I, I disregard the pictures that I've just done. Um, I'm like really into them, like when they work. Um, but it's, it's about sort of, yeah, right, I've done it. Like I've seen people sort of, and I've got nothing against this, but like people doing a drawing and then writing, you know, I first started with this and then I did that. And then like, I didn't think it was working. And then I did, you know, I don't, I just do it, put it to one side and then move And then on to, next. Yeah. And about the live drawing scene in, it's particularly vibrant in London and particularly also, it feels connected somehow. Everyone yeah, knows yeah, everyone, yeah, yeah. and, and it's all there's the world, a sense yeah. of community yeah, yeah, in, in the live drawing scene in London. And I have just worked in London, so I don't have really idea if that's normal in all other cities of Euro Europe or how it is. But I feel uh, <clears throat> that we should be proud of the of the scene and. Do you what what do you feel regarding that area of your experience going out, going to sessions, being part of a little community or war that is so um vibrant? I think it's the good it's the best word. Yeah, I mean the the me going to classes was always partly linked to the teaching, because I do think if you're gonna teach, you should go to classes. You should be in that situation as a student mm -hmm. like I think if you don't have that experience it's very easy as a teacher to be detached from their experience yeah. so I think it's worth doing um, but an awful lot of the work that I've produced came from your classes um, with our model collective yeah 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 I mean a lot of my stuff was sort of from, from there um, since I've been working on on zoom and sort of been drawing people from like you know like Argentina and sort of uh, Colombia and all over Ooh. the world. Yeah, no, I mean, there isn't, doesn't seem to be anything quite like it uh, anywhere else. Mm. I mean, for ages, I just thought it was just a thing I did. It was quite funny. I had a model that wrote to me and sort of said, oh, you seem to be a big part of the, the life drawing community. And I was like thinking, community? It's just, it's just classes. <laughs> what are you people, talking yeah, about? What and I sort of thought, oh, I suppose there is a sort of, like, it's a group. Uh, the, and the interesting thing now is that there's all these other connections with classes in, in Brighton and in Scotland mm. and uh, other parts of the world. Yeah, and the states. Um, but there isn't, as far as I can tell, there isn't anything that's quite like what happens like London. And do you think it's related with the big tradition of representational arts in this country? What do you think it is? I, I think because I've been going to drawing classes for a long time. Like, so I left college like in two. No, sort of 2000, uh, 1987, and I used to go to evening classes. So you'd go to like colleges where they'd like teach motor vehicle maintenance or, you know, like flower arranging. Mm -hmm. And then there was like a place where you did life drawing classes. My understanding and my impression of it is that the, the, those colleges eventually started to become technical colleges. So that class that I mentioned to you, the one that was the large scale painting class, suddenly like we were getting a qualification at the end of the year and they were just asking us to sort of piss off basically and it was like yeah but I just come here every you know like I've been coming here for years I think what sort of happened is those places died like there's always been this sort of tradition in England I don't think it's to do necessarily 100% with the tradition in art I think it's to do with the tradition of people having hobbies and interests okay So people used to go I agree. to yeah. people used to go to these and the things. cup of tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just like <laughs> the it's a social thing. Yeah. And, yeah, the social social opportunities, social escape. Yeah. Those places ended up becoming like colleges where you learn IT. Uh, that's the impression I get. That's what happened to a lot of the colleges I used to go to. So we never I never used to go to a class. So I in in the past I'd pay for a term or a year and I'd keep going to these drawing classes that were sort of part of colleges. So as those things started to die, suddenly, I think I noticed it first with Anna Noble Partridge's class at the uh, at uh, Candid. 
suddenly there was these classes that weren't evening classes. They were like you just candidat uh, yeah, uh, in yeah. angel. I think that's where I first started noticing it was that suddenly these things were just sort of popping up all over the place. So my understanding of it, my experience of it, though I don't, you know, like somebody else who sort of looked into it might know better, is that, yeah, it was the, the death of those places that sort of started these sort of people that were initially looking for places to draw. And then eventually, well, I mean, yeah, I suppose it's what happened with me. I ended up setting up my own classes just so that I could do it. Uh -huh. I'm going to many because there are many in bars, in pubs, in schools, uh, in everywhere, uh, houses of people, everywhere in London, every day of the well, week, this, you can do a session. Well, this is as one a of the model or uh, as a. Well, this was one of the nice thing about working with models was that they like you. You know this, like you'd be working in all these different weird little places with all these weirdos sort of doing drawings. Um, and you know, um, yeah, you'd probably you probably know London really well. Uh, <laughs> I th thanks to the classes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Right. So, <laughs> yes, that actually was one of the things I used to say at the beginning that at least I'm gonna knew the city. I'm gonna get to know the city. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. We are getting to the end sure. of this interview, but I would like to know also before we finish, okay. um, what would you like to be doing? in the next years, what's your next goal? What do you want to really become next or keep doing or, or in terms of your art? I don't know, tell me about that project for the future. I'm the worst person to ask that question to. Like, I have no idea what I'm going to be doing at the I end of the week. I knew you were going to say yeah, that. <laughs> you knew that I, 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 like I said, I, te I tend to sort of be led by it uh, and I'll see where it, the art, takes me if it takes me anywhere at all um but yeah i i i'd much rather sort of be surprised by what's around the corner than sort of plan something and then have it not work out i guess so i suppose that's my answer that's great answer okay, and you. i'm super super glad yeah, this really means a lot to me this conversation this time and see you, seeing you again well, to be honest, it's in just, real life. It's, just it's nice amazing. to be in a room with somebody, actually, to be honest. But like, yeah, no, it's it's, it's lovely to see you too. And thanks for asking me to, to come along. Can I Yeah, kiss yeah. You? I, I think that's a... Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, nice to see you too. Thank you. Uh, my pleasure, <laughs> pleasure. I think that was all right. And thank you to all of you for, for being with us till here. <laughs> okay. Salute. much for staying with us this far. I hope you enjoy that and if that's the case I would like to suggest you to enjoy the rest of our content. Also if you haven't done it yet please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you can get notifications every time we share a new episode with all of you. <laughs>